Hey everyone, this is part 5 of the Front of Mentor series where I've been building this social media dashboard with a dark light toggle. In this video, we're first going to check out some comments I got on the last video and incorporate their feedback into the website. Then we're going to load either dark or light mode on the website based on the user's system preferences in their OS. And last, we'll get that toggle working so that the user can switch between light and dark mode if they so choose. All right, let's get into it. So here is what we have so far in the challenge. And I wanted to point out some comments that I got in the last video, um, which actually was really great feedback. So um, this person, Amar, he was saying he doesn't think there should be three options for dark mode, it should be dark light toggle and system is a default, but then the user can switch from dark to light if they want. And what I had done was that I had three options for this toggle, um, dark, light, and then system preferences. And I realized through this comments from both Amar and also another user, Big Squeak, they both said the same thing, um, that you don't actually need the system preferences option because, you know, you can save the option based on your OS and have the website load that. And so you don't actually need to manually have that system preferences as an explicit option. And it kind of can be confusing or distracting. Um, so I think that actually makes a lot of sense. So what we're going to do is first kind of remove the system option so that the toggle is back to two options. And when we're considering the UI, it's always good to go back to the design. And we can see in the design that, you know, the original toggle was two options and it's really just a dark mode toggle. So it's sort of like a light switch. You're turning dark mode on or you're turning it off to go to light mode. So dark mode off is on the right position and then dark mode on is the left position. So I think I just kind of got away from maybe what the design originally intended, which, you know, it happens. So yeah, thank you to both Amar and also Big Squeak for bringing this up to me. So here's our site and let's go back into our code and we want to go to the toggle. Um, and I do have the site already running with gulp and stuff. So let me just make this a little bit smaller since we don't really need it right now. So here is the toggle and yeah, we got these three options here, system, dark and light. So I'm going to remove system and I think that's all I need to do. Oh yeah. Remove the labels too. So let's save that and then go back to our site. Okay, so now it goes from dark to light, and I think it's a little bit wider now than I really need it to be. Um, let's see what the design says. 48. And obviously, this is wider, I think, because of the third option that I added in there. And my toggle is 60. And let's see. I'm trying to see where I had set that width from. The toggle is 1FR 3.75 rems and 1FR. So let's look in the grid inspector, header toggle. Okay, so yeah, you can see that this is, let me actually maybe zoom in a little bit just so we can see the toggle a little bit better. So it's those three columns. It is 1FR 3.75, 1FR. So I actually want to remove the, oh, not, sorry, not remove. I want to decrease the width of that middle column to whatever 48 pixels is. So let's see where that's set and go into our SAS files. Let's find the toggle, toggle.scss. So this is one reason why I like SAS and organizing all my files like this, because, you know, I know that I'm working on the toggle so I can go into the components folder because it's probably there and then look for toggle. So splitting the, the styles up in partial files, I think is just, it helps when you have to go back and fix stuff. So here we go. So rem 60. So now it's going to be 48 and I think everything else can stay the same. Yeah. So let's save that and go back to the site. And now we have just the two columns. Let me actually, there we go. Okay. So that's pretty good. I think also if we look at the design, it's just dark mode. Um, so I think maybe I don't need, um, I don't know if I need that label. So I mean, need to make the first one dark mode and then 
But if it is a radio button, you do kind of want a label. So maybe I can just hide this second label so that um, it's not visible. Although it's not visible, but it would still be read, picked up by screen readers. But if you're using a screen reader, you probably don't necessarily care about dark or light mode. Um, I could be wrong, but I think maybe I can just delete this label. Because actually the label, the dark mode is really just labeling the entire switch. It's not necessarily the choice for the radio button. So I think maybe this shouldn't be the label for dark, but maybe it should be like the the header kind of for the radio button. So I think I might need to look up what the correct element, like the semantic HTML element I want to use for that. So let's see. Let's check this link out. Okay, so legend. Oh, legend. Maybe that's what is for like the sort of title of the radio button. Yeah, I think maybe that's what I want. So instead of label for dark, this is going to be legend. Oops. Legend. And then we will move this up. I think under the field set, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see where that. Yeah, so it's the first element under field set. Okay. And then I might need to switch some of these styles since it's a different element now. Yeah. I wonder if I could just put it in toggle wrapper. Let's see if I can manually move it in the browser. <laughs> Doesn't exactly work. Because toggle wrapper is. Oh, for the actual toggle. Yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. So I might need to do field set also like display grid, I guess. Wait, right now it is the three column thing. And that was originally for the label. It was dark, then the toggle and then light. So now I've removed light. So I actually just need this to be two columns. Let's just test this in the browser first. So I think it's just one FR. Three rems. Is that right? Um, and then I don't want. I just want it's all in one row. Um, maybe auto instead of one fr since. Oh, then I need to adjust the. Okay, let's just go into the code. I need to adjust the location of the cells. So let's figure out what we're gonna do. So I want to set header toggle to be two columns. The first column is going to be the legend element. Second column is going to be the toggle wrapper. So let's do that. Toggle. Oh, label. Um, oh yeah. So this this is sorry. This is the CSS grid parent header toggle toggle, and I set the styles under toggle. Okay, so it's two columns, and we're going to remove this because it's one row. And I think the gap can be the same. And the label is what's different now. So I actually don't need the dark system and light stuff anymore since we're not doing that. I don't know if I need to align self either. So instead of label, it's legend. And then the so legend and then it's toggle wrapper is the second column. So legend will be grid column one and ends at two since it's just taking up the first column. And then wrapper will be two, one to two, I guess two to three is right. Yeah. And then we'll move grid row because it's just that one. And I think that should fix it. All right, um, what's going on? Why is it not all in one row like I want it to? Okay, clearly some things are larger than the grid. It's so weird. I think I'm doing something very wrong here and I don't know what. I'm going to start over. I'm deleting all the grid properties. Deleting all the grid properties. Let's make sure we don't have anything else weird here. 
Okay. Now, this is no grid is going on. So now let's try adding a grid. Display grid. Grid template columns. And we'll say two columns. So a one fr and then let's say four rems. Let's just say one fr one fr. So now let's. Okay, so now it's already not fitting in one row. I'm just going to add static things. So we'll do six rems and three rems. Okay. So now let's place the first one. Grid column. One, two. What if I did two, three? Oh. Interesting. It's not doing anything. I wonder if the display block would do something. Wow. I feel like I need to uh, return my CSS membership card or something. So this is not working. It's not positioning this anywhere, which is weird. Okay, I'm just going to try to set this as a div and see if that does anything. Div um, grid column one, two. Let's see if two, three. Oh, so this moved it. So there's something about the legend element not working. Interesting. Interesting. So legend element is not getting affected by grid properties, which is very strange. Let's see if we can do it for the toggle wrapper. So grid column two, three. So that's working. One, two. So let's look that up. So CSS grid legend element not working. Okay, yeah, setting the fields at to display grid, which is what I wanted. Um, the implementations for field set and legend is extremely rigid with li very little accommodation for change to layout modes via the display property, which is what happened when I tried to set it to display block, it didn't do anything. Display grid is not supported on field sets by any browser. Whoa, when was this written? 18. Hmm. So I think maybe I can't do grid on the field set. So let's delete that, go back to this. So I think this actually makes a lot of sense because I think in Sarah Soidan's example, she was using display inline block, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't remember where this was set, but I do remember that happening and I was kind of curious why that was happening. So I want to do display inline block for the legend. Oops. Display inline block. And I think display inline block too. Hmm. I don't know why this is so hard. Okay, she has a thing here. Um. So this in code pen. Okay, so the field set, and she's using a div. Um, oh, theme switching toggle. Wait, why is it commented out, but it's still showing up? Oh, this is just the H one there. Oh, cause she did labels. So it seems like the legend, it forces it to be just above the toggle itself. For some reason, it's just not letting you control the display. Mm, what if I display inline? 
Yeah, that's not going to do anything. This is a very strange little thing. Yeah, so display property on trade on field set and legend. Oh, it said it does support it back on field sets. A rendered legend is not a child box of the anonymous field set con content box. Oh, interesting. So that's why I think the, it couldn't act as a grid child. All right, let's read the spec. Field set is, is, is expected to act as follows. The element will establish a new block format and context. The child is a legend element. Float is none, position none. I think what I'm actually going to end up doing is switch this back to a label so that it'll be dark mode on for the first label and then dark mode off for the second label, but I'm going to hide the second label. I don't know if that's the right solution, but I think the legend is not necessarily what I'm looking for. So... Dark mode, and then we're going to add a little span here for on, and I'm going to hide this with the... I think I did I do this last time. I don't remember. Um, screen reader. I want a screen reader hidden thing. Um, I don't think I added it, so I guess I can add it in now. Okay, screen reader. Here we go. So visually hidden. So I'll take this, put it in our boilerplate. And then if I add this visually hidden class to the span, Then I'll add back that label. And do the same thing for the dark mode off. I know it seems maybe silly because if you're using a screen reader, you're not going to really be navigating this toggle, but at least you'll be able to know that it's there even if you're not selecting an option. Okay, so then we're going to go back to the toggle. Yeah, label. And we're going to go back to display grid. Um, grid template columns. Let's say one of our three rems. Then label. What was it? Four? Dark. I'm not sure if that's right, but we'll see. Um, grid column. One, two. All right, let's see if that does anything. Oh yeah, I'm talking about grid column two, three. Or, sorry, right, grid doesn't work at all. So I think I actually need the label to be before the toggle and then use display inline block. Okay, now it's sort of aligned where I want it. And we'll, we need to get rid of that grid column stuff. Um, line height. I think it's going to match the height of the toggle wrapper and hopefully it'll be more centered now. Yay! And then we need to get the space between dark mode and the label. 13 pixels. So we'll say margin right rem 13. Okay, so it's working. Working with the keyboard. Okay. That took way longer than I think it probably should have. 
So I apologize for that. But now we have the two option toggle back. But yeah, you learn something new every day. Field set can't be display grid, or at least the late the legend tag doesn't seem to be working with display grid. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a good lesson of like, don't overcomplicate things. You don't necessarily have to toss a grid or flex box on every single thing since this is working just fine um, with uh, the label being set like that. Wait, I am doing display grid. Oh, so I guess grid does work. But yeah, it's like not trying to overcomplicate things and just controlling the alignment with um, the line height property. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is I want to start getting the logic working so that if your system preferences are set to either light or dark, the website will automatically load either light or dark mode based on um, the media query for prefers color scheme. So I think one of the links from my notes was the prefers color scheme thing from uh, MDN. So this is a media query. Um, it can be set to either light or dark. Zoom in a little bit. And then it's here. So media prefers color scheme dark. So I believe we can target that to set the background to be either light or dark. Then there's another example on Pick Piccalilli, um, which is a really great blog by Andy Andy Bell. He writes a lot of stuff on CSS. So this is a really good explanation on the prefers color scheme thing. So let's just see how he did it here. Um, here's the CSS for the regular styles. And he's also doing the visually hidden thing. Um, he's really good about accessibility stuff too. So using CSS custom properties for the different colors, which is what I did. This is interesting. He's setting a color mode variable, setting it to light by default. That's interesting. Mm, let's see. Okay. Here we go. So the background is set to var background which is far background is set by default to a light color. Okay. And then if you have your preferred color scheme dark, then the color mode set to dark. Okay. And then also you're setting the background to like the different dark colors for dark mode. Data user color scheme. I'm not sure what that is. So if you have your OS set to dark mode, then you're setting the color mode variable to dark. And then this selector is if the root is not data user color scheme, then you're setting it to I'm confused. Um, looks like these are sort of doing the same thing. Okay, let's read the explanation. If the user prefers dark mode inside the media query, we're making the relevant theme changes. In the same media query, we're setting the color mode, which is color mode dark. The CSS, notice how the CSS is applied if the HTML root element doesn't have a data user color scheme attribute. This is to prevent the default overriding user preference. Okay, so I guess he's setting this data field on the HTML element if there is a color scheme, either light or dark detected, and it's saying he's setting it with JavaScript. Let's just do a search for this data user color scheme because I'm not super familiar with it. Okay. So data user color scheme equals dark. Where is this set? Maybe use your color scheme. Do a search for that. Okay. And this is the JavaScript part and he's using um, local storage to set, like to save if you have this set. Hmm. Okay. So maybe we'll get back to this later. I think maybe right now we want to kind of just get the bare bones of displaying. Maybe we'll just work on just changing the background color to be either dark or light. So I'm sure there's a reason that he's doing this stuff. Um, I think I might just 
use prefers color scheme and then set the variable for background to um, light. And I think I'm going to, I don't know if this is right, but I think I'm going to set the default to uh, dark. Let's think about this. How do we want to do this? So we got this media prefers color scheme. So we can maybe start setting this media query up in our colors. And then I set the background color, I think in boilerplate. Okay, so I set the body background to dark background by default. But I wonder if I actually want just a background variable and then in the here, in the preferred color scheme, the background variable will be set to different values. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Or you could do the media query on every single like thing here, but I feel like that you'd end up adding a lot of media queries for the preferred color scheme in different places as opposed to having them all in one place. Okay, so let's try this. <laughs> um, does that make sense to create like, I don't even know if this is right, but background and then set it to itself like var dark background. I don't know if that's going to work. And then in body, you're just going to say background. Let's see if that did anything. Okay, so it looks the same. Let's check out the body. All right, so the background was set to var background. which is it's a var dark background. I'm just going to change something just to see if it'll work. So let's do this obvious different color here. I'll set background to the green color. Mm, it does work. Okay, so I guess you can sort of set variables to other variables. Is that... I mean, it's working. I don't know if that's great. Okay, so he said body. So he said body background of our background too. Um, yeah, I guess you can background set to var color dark. Okay, so I'm not totally off here. <sighs> well, since I didn't set it, I think usually people put light mode as a default. So maybe we'll do that. So we'll set it to light by default, and then if prefers color scheme set to dark, we'll do root background dark ooh hey it changed and i think in windows yeah here we go so this is windows in mac it will be a bit different but in your settings color you can choose dark lighter custom so let's have our website open and then have our settings open and let's see if this is working, if I set this to light, it should change to a light background. So let's see if this works. Oh, dang, it did work. Whoa. Change back to dark. It goes back to dark. Not bad. That's pretty cool. Okay, well that part was sort of easy, at least getting the logic down. And I think my approach is right too. So in light of that, Let's work on changing all the colors to be light, the light mode by default, and then, you know, getting the dark mode colors set and then the light mode colors set. So started with the background and then we want to also change the text colors. So let's see where I set this. Um, color set on body. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I guess just make another variable. Let me see how Andy did it. Are all the variables just set? Yeah, so background. It looks like... Um, it looks like background is initially set in the same place as all the other variables, so... 
We're just going to have a really long list of these things here. But I guess that's okay. So we'll say text color. And by default, we want that to be in light mode, it would be the dark color. So what color would that be? Let's go back to design. 1D1 F29. Um, I wonder if you can set Figma to use HSL instead of hex. Um, let's see. Let's just Google this really quick. Yeah, default display of color values in HSL. Looks like it's not a feature right now. Okay, 230, 17, 14. That was this one, light text too. And then text color, if it's dark, we want to, oops, I forgot the var part. Dark text too. Okay, and then we'll switch to light. Ooh. Oh yeah, and I need to adjust the, um, I need to use text color for the text color. There we go, so now, then we need to set that thing. Ugh. This is 230, 12, 44. Light text one. Oh, that's interesting. It's supposed to be 230 based on Figma. And that is... What element is this? Header subtitle. Okay, so we'll go to header. Subtitle. Oh, no. Um, I need to make a new variable. Oh boy. Text color two. <laughs> and then we'll use that for here. Okay, so now Yeah, now it looks closer to the design. Yay. I'll need to fix the toggle colors too for light mode. And then I guess we'll also have to switch the position of the toggle for that. Um, let's do the toggle last. Let's just get these colors set correctly. So the next one is the card background. So dark card. And then if we go into card, background is far dark card. Um, and then the text will be the next thing. Okay. And then the text. Let's get that hover state. Looks like the hover is exactly... Oh, no, here we go. Ooh, what color is that? 228, The dark card hover. I think I didn't make a light card hover. Um, oh yeah, dark card, dark card cover, light card, light card hover. Hover. 228, So 
So then hover card hover. Let's see if that works. Nice. So it's not too bad. It's like once you get things working, then you just kind of have to do the slightly busy work of just, you know, finding and adding each little item. So maybe we can um, fast forward through me replacing the rest of the colors here. Okay, so we got all the colors switched. And let's test it by changing back to dark mode. Oh yeah, so we need to fix this stuff. All right, cool. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now let's work on the toggle stuff. Toggle styles if you're in light mode. 230, 1960. What's this used for? Okay, so I think this color actually needs to be... ...230-1960. And then... ...the label. Toggle. We should say toggle light. And toggle itself should be toggle light. And for dark, it'll be, I think it was just white. Yeah. Um, light background. Okay. Wait, that doesn't seem right. Why did I have it nested like that? Okay. And I think it has to be bold. Seven hundred. There we go. Okay, now the toggle itself. So if it's light, it's just the background color is just like the oval is that really light color. Let's do the background. 230, 22, 74. What was it? 230, 22, 74. I think that might have been the one I just deleted. <laughs> toggle background light. And then I guess we'll just do toggle background. 
and then set it to toggle background light. Oh, that's why I added that double one. It's slightly annoying. Okay, and then for the dark mode, then we'll do that linear gradient thing. Toggle background. One thing that I find a little annoying, and maybe this is because I'm not super familiar with CSS properties, but it's hard to find the actual like value for something. So for example, I want to see what the background color of this toggle background is right now. I go to computed. It doesn't exist because it's set to the, a variable. So, and then you have to go, okay, toggle background. What is toggle background light set to? And then it looks like I did that wrong. That's why it's not showing up. So it's just like extra steps. Um, you know, maybe I'm just not as familiar. I just need to get used to um, navigating the colors when they're set with CSS properties versus SAS variables, which just kind of compile the regular CSS. But yeah, just one thing that I've kind of noticed. Toggle background light. Oops. Shoot. Okay, there we go. And then I'll set this thing. Toggle button. Toggle button. And we want that to be... F1F 228 Okay, I need to make a new one for that. Um, toggle button light two twenty eight forty six ninety six, and then set another new variable for toggle button. Okay, toggle button light. And then for dark, it'll be, here we go. Toggle button, and then for dark, toggle button will be set to this. Okay, nice. Cool. All right. So I think the next thing we wanted to do was get the toggle working. Yeah. Okay, so for the toggle logic, what I want is to... I guess there's a couple things. One is we want the switch to actually control, you know, what mode you're using. Two, I need to, if the user color preferences are set and we're loading the thing, we also need the toggle to be set. So like right now I have my 
OS set to light mode and it's low to the light mode, but the toggle is still set to dark mode because that's sort of the default thing. So I need to sort of auto select on the toggle what the preferences are um, if they're set. So maybe first we will work on maybe having clicking the toggle. I, think I need to adjust. It's not quite detecting the light mode thing. Oh yeah, because here we go. Radio buttons need to be set to the size 18 by 18 and it's 20 by 24. Hmm. How tall is the thing itself? 24. I think I actually want it to be 24 by 24. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay. Toggle input type radio width is 1.5 rems. Okay. Now it's detecting the clicks better. Okay. Good. So let's work on if I set the toggle to dark mode on to the left, it'll have dark mode and then switch to light mode. So let's figure out how to do that. So I think what I want to do is I need to figure out how controlling the toggle will set the color scheme. Cause right now all I did was change the color variables based on media prefers color scheme. And let's see how people did that. So I think what Andy did was he set an attribute on the HTML element. With the data user color scheme thing. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, so right now, let's say this is it to light mode. If I wanted to switch to dark mode, I'd click the switch. And then what I would want is clicking that switch would, I guess, add a class or something to the HTML. And then based on that class, it would switch the variables. And then in the CSS, I would have to, I wonder if I could just add another thing here where me it prefers color scheme dark and if the thing is detected if the data attribute or the class is selected i'm just trying to see how andy did it here it seems a little bit complicated in his styles the media prefers color scheme all it does is sets the color mode variable to dark um and then i think there's maybe a link between this variable and then if the data user color scheme is set to dark because it's not setting color mode here. So there's some link I'm guessing in the JavaScript that if it detects you've set your OS to dark, it'll set the color mode variable to dark. And then it will set the data user color scheme attribute to dark. Okay. So OS setting to the color, var color mode variable to set the data user color scheme. Let me see if I can find where he did that in the JavaScript. Okay, add a function to extract the color mode value. I'm not familiar with this. Let's look that up. Window get computed style. Is that what he was using? I'm just using a function get computed style. Hmm. Huh. It's a method of the window object. So getting a style of you're getting the computed value of all CSS properties with get computed style. Okay. So it's just getting the CSS properties. So 
So he's getting the CSS properties of document element, and he's getting the value of the prop key property. All right, this is a condensed version of the function used in this tutorial, which I guess we need to read. Get a CSS custom property value with JavaScript. And that is used to get the value of color mode Get computed style. Okay, so this example is using support scroll snap variable, support scroll snap, and then the JavaScript is saying getting the component. So he's getting the CSS custom property. Wait, was this, is this an actual thing? I can't, I can't tell if this is an actual function or if it was created. It's like it's the same. Okay, he's basically doing the same thing. Um, okay, it's just linking to this article. I can't figure out if get computed style, get computed style is an actual function that exists. Get CSS custom prop function. Oh, here you go. Oh boy. So you're creating a function to get the CSS custom property. Okay, that's fine. Just seems like a lot of extra stuff. I'm curious if... I think I want to see how other people implement a dark light mode thing. I mean, I know this is... I'm sure this is like the right way of doing it. It just seems like a lot. <laughs> Dark mode toggle and CSS tricks. Let's see if CSS tricks has anything. A complete guide to the dark mode toggle. Okay, so we'll read, read a couple of these things. Toggling themes. Okay, there's several approaches to do this using a body class, separate style sheets, custom properties, server side scripts. Okay, if users want to override their system preference for a site. It looks like he's overriding it with the CSS class. So if you select light theme, it will add the light theme class to the body. That seems cool. I mean, it seems like a lot of extra stuff because you're setting the light theme in two places. But I guess that makes sense. I mean, it seems pretty easy. You're setting, you're, you're using this button to switch it based on the class. This is interesting. I'm saying <clears throat> you might have a flash of, I guess, a flash of color if, let's say you your OS is set to light mode, but you manually set the page to load in dark mode, and you save that with local storage. So the idea is when you reload the page, you go back to the website, it will detect, it'll read your local storage and then change to dark. But if light's a default, when you hit reload, it'll have a light mode initially loaded. And then when the JavaScript runs to read the local storage and see that you want dark mode, then it'll switch to dark mode, but it'll be flashed quickly from light to dark. So I'm wondering how Andy got around that. Let's go to the code pen. So right now, Um, interesting. So I set it to dark. Okay. So I set it to dark. Let's enable light mode. So let's reload and see. Oh yeah. See, there's that flash. <sighs> um, wait, I set it to dark. interesting. It doesn't seem to be detecting if I'm in light mode. So I want light mode. So if we reload, it should load in light mode. Yeah, it's the dark. He made a dark default. So that's why it's flashing. Yeah, so I guess there's no great way around that. Um, 
unless you're doing server side so that it'll set it, you know, before everything's get loaded. So it's interesting. I wonder if there's a way around the, that flash thing. User agent styles, color scheme, meta tag. Okay, so this is light mode, even though I've set to dark. So I set it to dark, now let's reload. Hmm. Yeah, there's a flash here too, see. Huh, interesting. Yeah, so anytime you use JavaScript, it'll have that flash if it's different. Maybe there's just not a great way to do it. So let's think about this. Um, so maybe we'll worry about the flash, not at all, or another time, because this is maybe a bit of an edge case, but Let's at least figure out how we want the toggle logic to work. So Andy Bell did it by adding um, a attribute on the HTML body, on the HTML element. You can also do it by adding a class on like the body. So what I want to do is, is there a way to do it so that I can use the same logic for this I can use the same set of rules for the color scheme and also if the attribute or the body class is set. And I don't know if I can, because this is technically a media query. Let's see if that's possible. Let's see if you can do CSS selector media query or has class. I don't think it's possible. Um, let's think about this. I just don't want to duplicate these rules. But I don't know if there's a way around that. So maybe we'll let's figure out if how we want to set the color with the toggle. So if we set it to dark, maybe we want to add the class. If we set it to light, then it'll add the light class to the body. So let's see if this works. I'm going to create another selector where if the body has class dark. Can you do that? And I guess we'll do another one for light. So body has class light. Root will be And if we end up having extraneous code, we can just remove it later. But for now, let's test this out. So let's go back to our site. So now it's dark mode because my OS is set to dark. Let's add. Oh, let's just add class light to the body element. Oops. Okay, and it's not working. And why it's not showing up? I wonder if this doesn't work. Let's just try something. Color. I just want to see if the selector will show up. Okay, so it's showing up, but I think I just couldn't set the variables under the body selector. So let's we have to see how they did it. This is a little start up being kind of easy, but then the toggle part seems to be a little bit more difficult. Okay, root level. 
Oh, okay. So it's just in the selector, you set the variables to whatever. So I don't need this. Okay, now let's see if it works. Add attribute. Class. Light. Ooh, look at that. All right. Now we're going. Yeah, I think there's no other way of doing it. So there's just going to be a bit of duplicate code here. Okay. Hey, not bad. So now we want the toggle to add or remove the class. So script. Can delete this. So what we want to do is um, let's close the others, and I want to open my index.html file. Okay, so the toggle. If it selects dark, we want it to add the dark class. If it selects light, we want it to add the light class. I'm gonna see how Andy did it. I'm just sort of using his code as an example. Um, oh, he's doing a button, which is a little bit different. Let's just close this stuff out. So what I'm looking for actually is the JavaScript for the event when you click the radio button. All right, he's using a button too. So let's look, JavaScript um, radio button select event. Okay, so it works to find the selected radio button, find the checked property. Oh, okay. So I guess we can see check if dark is selected is checked or light is checked. Um, if RB is checked, let's test this. So document get element by ID dark and checked is light checked. Oh, it's true now. Okay, so it does work. It's gonna be const um, dark. How do we wanna do this? If I just do document get element by ID, if dark is checked, then Query selector body class list equals dark else class list equals white and 
we want to run this uh, whenever the toggle is clicked. So this is setting the click event on the button. And where's the button element? Wait, where is it? Button. Huh. Radio button click. So I think I can do a click event on... What if I can do it on, like, the header toggle input element? Let's see. Um, so what is it? Maybe toggle input type radio, really. I could, I think I could add that on. So... Input. I guess I just do toggle wrapper input. Const um, radio buttons. And then for each. Whoops. Uh, I don't know JavaScript that well. Um, JavaScript ES6 uh, radio buttons click event. I think I was thinking of .NET. Um, Find the click event. There you go. Event arrow. Um, let's just do console log click. Right now I'm just trying to test that clicking one of the radio buttons will run the uh, console. Oops. Uh, script line two, assignment to undeclared variable i. Okay. Click. Okay. Looks like it's working. All right, so the click event is working. Now, let us, I think, move this logic in here. So hopefully if we click this, we'll see the class getting added to the body element and it should switch. Yay! Yes! Yes! Okay, well, I guess that was... I don't know if it was easy, but it's working now. Dang, pretty cool. Okay, so we have the toggle working. What we want to do now is save your settings. And I guess people seem to be using a local storage for that. So if we manually change the mode, and maybe we should add some logic for like if, I don't know if we have to, but I wonder if we have to add logic for if the checking if the local storage matches the prefers color scheme thing, but maybe we don't have to do that. 
So we'll start with checking. We'll start with saving the mode, whether dark or light, to local storage. Then when we reload the page, we want to check local storage and see if it's dark or light. And then I guess add the corresponding class to the body. Because if we just load, the body doesn't have anything. OK, so let's do that. So saving to local storage. Let's go back to the handy dandy um, Andy Bell's thing. Local storage. Let's see. OK, window local storage. OK, local storage dot set item. And then this is the key. My cat value is Tom. And then get. So it's very similar to a cookie where you can set a value and then get the value. So local storage set item. So I guess in JavaScript, I guess I want to add the logic for if it's checked. So I think I need to make this a full if statement. I feel like people like don't want to use if statements nowadays, and I don't quite know why. But I guess we can look that up later. <laughs> Just something that I've seen. Like I think Web Dev Simplified made a video about that. But we'll just start for now and then we'll, you know, if we feel like it, we'll check it out later. So if it is dark, we want to set local storage. Set item. And I guess we'll just say color mode. And we'll set it to dark. Otherwise, we'll set it to light. <clears throat> and then I guess. Maybe we'll also test it so that um, when we first load the site, we want to locals. We want to load the local storage um, get item color mode. Okay, let's see how that looks. So let's set it to light, and now let's reload. And it's set to light. Now we set it to dark. It's set to dark. <laughs> so now here's a test. I set it to light. Or actually, I guess we can't test it now because we want to get. Oh, that's not good. We need to fix that too. OK, so we want to get get the color mode. And then if the color mode is dark, we'll load the, add the dark class. If the color mode is light, we'll load the light class. So I wonder if we need to make some more functions out of this. I think I'm not doing this right. Um, let's see. I think there we go. Yay. Oh boy. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not huge. I'm not super experienced in JavaScript. Let's just double check that um, arrow function. Two constants. I think I've seen it where you set the variable or the you set the function to like a const or something or a let. OK. OK, it looks like that's what I was doing. All right, so I'm getting the color mode. And then. Should I create another function for like set dark mode? And then another one for set light mode. So then set dark mode, we will add dark to the body class. Light mode. And then we'll do this. Add the light to the body class. And then we'll just use these function names. 
then we're not duplicating code. So we'll say set color mode. And then if, if color mode equals dark, then set dark mode. Else set light mode. And then we'll run color mode. Okay, so let's just, I'm going to add some console log messages just to make sure everything's running. Set color mode. And then I guess we also want to get the local storage thing. Okay, color mode is set to light. It looks like it is saving the toggle thing. I don't know if I... I don't think I wrote logic for that. Maybe it's just saving... It's interesting. Oh yeah. I think it's just saving the radio button position. Like if I hit reload when I'm already there, but if I do like a hard reload... Yeah. But it seems to be working. Um... I reload it stark mode, then select light mode, and then reload it set to light. So then I just need to add some logic to um, sort of auto select the thing. So local storage, I guess I'll add another one. If, if local storage color mode is dark, else. And then, what was it? Oh yeah, so if I'm checking the local storage, I want to set the radio button to... I want to auto set either dark or light on the radio buttons. What if I can do this? Will this work? Or do I have to click it? And event listener, click. Oh no. Or do I just do click? Okay, I guess I do just click. Maybe I'll set a constant for the dark and the light buttons. So then I can just refer to those when I need them. So then we'll replace the air. So if dark button is checked, then select dark. And then now I will do if color mode is set to dark from the local storage, I will say dark button click. Otherwise I will say light button click. All right, let's see if this works. So I'm set to light mode, so I want to do a hard refresh, and hopefully it will select the light setting. Okay. Cool. 
Now let's test this by maybe removing the... Where do I remove the local storage? Storage? Here we go. I need clear, delete all. There we go. So now we'll do a hard refresh. Hmm. And it sh I want it dark to be default. And it looks like. Let's see here. No local storage is set. Um, set color mode, nothing. It's null. So let me see here. So why is it loading light? I'm curious about that. What happens if I just open a new browser window? Okay, so color mode is null. And let's check the body class. Oh, interesting. Body class is set to light. Why is that happening? We'll add some more console log messages here. Radio button clicked, so let's save that. And now, if we do a hard refresh, set light mode is running. Now, why is set light mode running? Set color mode ran. And then local storage is blank, so it returned the null. And then set light mode ran. Oh, it's because of this. Hmm. Because it's not dark, so it was null, which means since it's not dark, it's running light mode. Okay, so now, yeah, if we do a hard refresh, it's null, and then it's loading dark mode. So, it's working. Yeah. Cool. Let's also test it. Um, if I... Empty local storage. Delete all. My thing's set to dark. It's loading dark if it's set to light. Loads light. Okay. Oh, this is not working either. Um, so this is just based on the prefers color scheme. So what I want to do is I need to check the prefers color scheme and then set the toggle. So how about you do that? Set the toggle position based on the color scheme that you've set. Hmm. How do I check the prefers color scheme with JavaScript? Let's exit out some of these things. Um, JavaScript check prefers color scheme. So it's the window get computed style, which I think Andy was using. Hmm. Wait, where's the code? Oh, that's interesting. Window match media. Hmm. That's interesting. Window match media. So let's test it. Let's change to dark mode. Uh oh. Um. <laughs> hmm. That was weird. Why didn't it change from light to dark?
weird. Okay, so we can just use this logic. Dot matches. So, what I want to do is if the... Let's go back to our site. So by default, it's in this position. So if I want to, I want to detect if it's in light mode. Const um, get color mode. Or else do light, because we want dark to be default. And then, um, I think actually all I have to do is check for light, because it's dark by default. I'm not sure why I was doing this return stuff. So I think I just need the one condition. Check is light. So if it is, then I want to select document or light button click. I think that's all I need to do. And then I want to run this. Okay, so what I want to do is, if I select light mode, it should go to light mode and then the radio button should switch to light. Ah! Um, oh, because I need, I think I need to reload the page in order for that to work. Yeah, so now it's working, but you want to run the thing when you change. So I don't even know if it's possible to detect the change. Ooh, that's kind of annoying. So how can you detect, can you detect the change of your color mode like through JavaScript? There's a lot of levels of uh, complexity to this. Can you detect a prefers color scheme change? How often would that actually... Oh, Flavio. I was wondering how often would it actually... Would you actually need this? So if we delete this, do a hard refresh. I think I did set light as a default. <laughs> right? Did I do that? I can't even remember anymore. Um... Okay, yeah. So a default is light mode. Because this should switch it to dark and toggle is not changing. Hmm. So I did this window match media matches. Yeah, what if the user changes mode while using the website? Can you check the mode change using an event listener? Ooh. So you can add an event listener. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Flavio. So I think what I want to do is make re rename this to or hold on. Let's um let's make a new function maybe. For uh, what is this? Um, check mode change, for lack of a better word. Okay, so we just want to save that there. So I think I need to change this check mode, and then make this check for dark.
then run this function. I wonder why it has to be dark. Let's add a little console log here. Um, oops. All right. Oh, I forgot to change the check mode. Okay, so it's null, so it's light. Now let's change to dark. Oh, some stuff ran. Cool. Check mode changed. Click the radio button and it set dark mode. Hey! Now we set to dark mode. Now let's load. Oh my freaking. So I think local storage needs to trump whatever your um, prefers color scheme is because I'm in light mode, but I manually selected dark mode. And I want that to save. It is quite a, yeah, a little more complicated than I was thinking. So right now, mm, let me think about this. So I think I only want to run these things if Local storage is not set. Now let's change to... So I set it to dark mode. Okay, let's just start from the beginning. Um, storage, delete all this stuff. Let's do a hard refresh. Okay. So by default, we're in light mode, which makes sense. Now if we switch this to dark mode... Okay, good. Switch to dark mode, it switched the radio button selector. Let's change back to light mode. Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, I think I need to also change the local storage if the thing gets changed. Uh, this is hard. So there's like, there's three things controlling this. It's local storage, your prefers color scheme, and then if you manually click the radio button. So I, what I need to add, I think, is if the... Color scheme changes, I actually do want to, if it changes, no, hold on. If it changes, local storage was not set, but the radio button, I think it stayed dark because the radio button was set to dark. Okay, let's start over. Okay, nothing's been set. No local storage has been set. This is the light by default because I have my scheme set to light. So if I change to dark, goes to dark mode, the toggle goes to dark, and the local storage has been changed to dark. Okay, so if I reload, everything stays at dark. Everything stays at dark. But now, if I change the color scheme to light, nothing happens, and this is because local storage is still set to dark. So I guess the question is, maybe I'm overthinking this because, sure, I changed to light, but I can just change to light with the radio button if I want to. So is that does that seem like it's desired? 
behavior. Let's start over again. So light mode, light mode. Let's say, oh, I'm in light mode on my OS, but I want to load dark mode manually. So I've set it to dark. So now if I refresh, it's in dark mode. That seems like desired behavior. So let's delete this. Now we're back in light mode. So let's say, oh, I'm going to switch my thing to dark mode. I want everything to be dark. And it did do that. But if I switch to light mode, it stays in dark mode. But I feel like people aren't going to be switching their OS all that often. So I feel like I think maybe that's OK. I think this is an edge case that I'm thinking where you're like switching your color mode multiple times. I feel like this is operating the way I want it to. Yeah. Switch to light mode. I reload. Stays light. I think this is actually OK. So I think this works. Um, let's just quickly check about the if statements. Don't use if statements. Use object literals. And this might be a little beyond my current um, JavaScript skills, but let's check it out. All right, so there's a lot of if else if things. Do, 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 do. Could use a switch statement, which is sort of the same thing. Um, here's the alternative. So you're setting, creating an object. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure how this would work with this. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to keep this as is. Um, you're welcome to check out my code on my GitHub repo. And if you want to refactor this to a better way of checking for the conditionals, you know, you're definitely welcome to do that. But I mean, it works. I think the code is reasonably understandable um, in terms of checking the different, you know, modes and setting local storage and stuff like that. So I feel like we can sort of consider this project complete. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for following along with this. If you if you followed all the way to the end, uh, thank you for doing that. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you you know did make it all the way through. I'd just be interested to see how many people did that. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, you can again leave a comment. So thanks for watching, and yeah, we'll see you in the next video.